Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, here we go. Effects of pathology on vision. I debated whether or not to even include this lecture in here because it's a lot of what we already talked about. It's kind of like a recap. However, I thought to myself, if we could do this quickly, because we touched on a lot of stuff, right? Um, and in, in different lectures. If we could just take one lecture to kind of recap all this stuff very quickly, uh, the most important pathologies and how they affect vision, how they affect us, I just thought it would be a good kind of overview and uh, we could be done with it, right? So bear with me. I know I'm going to be repeating myself a little bit. However, this is going to be the first time we have it all smushed into one lecture. Um, and we've already gone through, I'm not going to go in detail the way I did in the others. We're just going to do a quick overview of all these different pathologies, how they affect vision, because ultimately we deal with vision, right? So let's go here. I'm going to open this thing up here uh, and let's go. So first, macular degeneration, gradual and, determin and detrimental, sorry, physical disturbance of the macula uh, and leads to loss of central vision in carrying degrees. Well, obviously I did not <clears throat> look in varying degrees. I'll make sure to change that in the workbook. However, uh, yeah, macular degeneration equals decrease VA over time, right? Uh, very important that it is detected early. Cataracts, reduce visual acuity due to the clouding of the crystalline lens, as simple as that, right? And it increases over time, right? As the cataract gets worse, vision decreases. So between, mac between macular degeneration and cataracts, this is affecting mostly our elderly, right? This is something that we always have to look out for. If you have elderly patients who have visual problems, first thing that comes to mind for me is A, do they have cataracts? Have they had cataract surgery? If they haven't, well, then that's probably where a lot of our problems are coming from. Uh, if they have, <clears throat> then we have to make sure that the result was good and that they understand the limitations of increased presbyopia. And for macular degeneration, well, uh, I ask the patients flat out, do you have any um, known retinal problems like macular degeneration or anything. A lot of times they'll tell you yes. Then you have to have a discussion as to the expectation of vision because there will be a decrease in visual acuity, right? So important to remember and it helps you out when you're troubleshooting and you're discussing vision with your patients. Uh, color blindness, we didn't talk about this one. Um, very, very uncommon, honestly. However, uh, genetic disorder, well, uncommon. It's it's common enough, but it's not really something that usually has a huge impact on our day-to-day -day kind of stuff. But genetic disorder in which the perception of color may be skewed from the normal. Uh, secondary effect of diet, uh, whoa, whoa huh, sorry, I've got one a little too, just, I'm missing a line between these two. But yeah, that's color blindness. Color blindness is not an enormous concern. Uh, there are tests that can be done. Uh, you know, you could do Ishihira plates. You could do different things like that. Uh, not an enormous concern in a dispensary. And actually, most people will tell you if they're colorblind. Um, fortunately, we're not testing color. We're just testing vision and, and visual acuity. So it's not an enormous concern. Uh, I went a little bit quick here on di diabetic retinopathy. However, you know, you can realize that when you understand what these things are, you understand when you're reading what it, re what it relates to, right? So in this case, diabetic retinopathy is secondary effect of diabetes in which the vasculature of the retina is compromised, leading to damage and reduced visual acuity. Main thing is that we know that diabetic patients need to be checked so that this doesn't become an issue. However, remember that this is gonna result in this decreased visual acuity. Another thing to ask patients, if people are starting to complain that they don't see like they used to, you have to start questioning the retina and you have to start thinking of things like macular degeneration like, or like cataracts, which is not the retina, but that's another cause, but also diabetic retinopathy. If your patient is diabetic, this does play. So it, it is a factor, right? How about glaucoma? Reduced visual field in the periphery due to increased intraocular pressure and optic nerve atrophy. So if we know the patient has glaucoma, the we have to start be considering their 
visual field results, right? And that is going to have an impact on their visual performance and visual comfort. Important to remember, glaucoma patients don't necessarily see as well as non-glaucoma patients, right? Makes sense. Uh, keratoconus, extreme steepness of the corneal curvature coupled with high degrees of irregular astigmatism. Uh, this one is going to be one that is probably going to have to be discussed before you even make the person glasses. What you're looking for in uh, keratoconus is high degrees of astigmatism or, you know, equals high degrees of cylinder in the prescription. Um, and usually uh, it is uh, irregular in the sense that this cylinder can't be corrected with lenses. This is something that <clears throat> you kind of almost have to specialize in this. You have to, you know, really have the knack for correcting a patient with keratoconus. However, if a patient tells you they have keratoconus, that is a huge sign of visual acuity expectations, all right? Because there's no way that their glasses are going to solve their their vision anywhere near as well as a contact lens would um, and fit properly by a professional who specializes in this, right? Uh, retinal detachments is the separation of light sensitive memory from the eye from the nerve tissue resulting in sudden or severe loss of vision um, and large areas of the visual field. So we talked about what, how to you know, um, recognize when this is happening. The end result afterwards is going to be decreased visual acuity and not in the same effect for everybody because if it was caught early and repaired properly there might actually be a small effect on visual acuity especially if it's a peripheral all right detachment however it is safe to assume that there is probably going to be some form of decreased visual acuity after treatment of retinal detachment and you have to understand this and the Important thing to understand on all of these things, all of these different conditions, all right, with maybe the exception of cataract and color blindness, actually. So we're going to just keep these separate. However, we do expect decreased visual acuity. And it's not, this isn't like the elephant in the room, right? Like we have to discuss this, that when a person is suffering from macular degeneration, when they're suffering from diabetic retinopathy, when they're suffering from glaucoma, keratoconus, and retinal detachment, we have to expect that visual acuity is going to be decreased. Um, and we have to discuss this with them, right? So that both of us are on the same page, both you and both of you are on the same page, both you and the patient, so that there is no miscommunication here. And well, cataracts too, really, I should not cataracts, but you know, I'm thinking cataracts after they've been solved, but even cataracts here, it's actually extremely important to include this because that also is going to lead to decreased visual acuity and we have to expect it. It shouldn't be a surprise. It should be something that we expect so that we can address it, right? Now, I'm gonna tell you something before we move on to what the you know significance is as we always do. One concept that I always wish we were do is that I wish the optometrist who is examining this patient were to communicate communicate pathology and inside of that also communicate best corrected visual acuity if you work in an office that has optometrists or optometrists i strongly suggest that you discuss this concept with them it makes your job easier it makes their job better because the patient feels like there's continuity there and everything's been discussed. Um, even having access to the patient file, if you guys are using EMR systems or it's electronic, seeing what the result of the eye exam makes life so much easier. Because imagine all these things we've talked about, all of these conditions, 90% of the time in the dispensary, the patient is arriving to you and you don't know any of this. You have no idea. What a horrible way to start, right? So. I can't iterate this enough. I'm, I'm going to iterate it so much, I'm going to add another color. Communicate with your doctors. Tell them, I would love to know if there's pathology and I would love to know what the best corrected visual acuity is when it is in 2020. Now, if it's 2020, not a huge deal, but if patient's coming to you with 2040 in one eye and 2060 in the other, and then you're trying to like figure out why they can't read you know, the J2 on the, on the reading card, well, no doubt, right? They don't see very well. So, you know, I want you to understand this and, and, and you know, it's up to us, as I stutter my way through this, it's up to us to communicate what we need. And if we're all doing it as a group, this is gonna become a common thing that we do, all right? Cool. 
Why is this all significant? Well, it should be pretty obvious, but you don't need to be an expert on the clinical side of the disease, but you should be on the visual side because we are visual experts. You know, understand what pathology affects VA or visual comfort, one of the two, right? Understand that part of it. If you don't consider eye health, you could be barking up the wrong tree. Oh, what a beautiful concept, right? Imagine patient has a problem, all right, and they are a progressive addition lens wear, PAL. You start playing with vertex distance. You start playing with pantoscopic tilt. You start playing with wrap. You start playing with uh, fitting heights, so OC height. You start fitting with P, playing with PDs. You start considering base curve. You start considering material type. What, what a rabbit hole. You know what that person's problem might have been the entire time? They are 20, 100, and 20, 60, and you didn't even know. Or they have cataract, well, actually in relation to this, and this could be due to ARMD, this could be due to cataracts, and like imagine all this wasted time when it could have just been this and you could have you know known from the beginning, right? Important, make sure you consider eye health at all times. I'm gonna move some of this stuff here because we're gonna have another point and oh, well, we're already there, so let's clean it up. And always think BCBA, all right? So we just, it kind of relates to the previous thing. What is the best corrected visual acuity? Am I accomplishing that? And do I need to troubleshoot further, right? Because if BCVA is low and not great, then the lenses are probably A-OK -okay doing what they're supposed to. It's due to the eye health. All right, and this is why I wanted to keep this lecture in the course because I want to hammer home this idea that pathology matters to vision and problems in the dispensary are not always due to all the things I mentioned like PDs and heights and lens design and material, corridor length and base curve and what sh whatever. It could be BCVA the whole time and it could be due to pathology, right? So know your pathology, understand the effects, always suspect it, always question, always ask, coordinate with your eye doctors and you will be much better at your job for it. All right, let's move on.